First Missionary Baptist Church in Anahuac, Texas. And if you'll come as we partake in the Lord's Supper this morning, each of you should have uh, your cups for us to reverence Him this morning. Amen. Good morning. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ and for his love for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. So we thank you for the gift of salvation, the greatest gift that has ever been given in human history. So this morning we look introspectively into our own hearts and we ask that you would search our hearts. We look retrospectively to the cross of Calvary. And we thank you, Lord, for the ultimate sacrifice. And then finally we look prospectively to your coming again. And one day you will come back to reclaim those who belong to you. And so that as we eat and drink, this morning, we do so with thanksgiving in our hearts and in remembrance of you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we were in the upper room, on that faithful evening, Jesus took the bread and he broke it and blessed it. He said, take this. This is my body that has been broken for you. In like manner, he took the cup of salvation. For without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission for sin. Let's receive it. as often as we do this 
we do it in remembrance of him. To God be the glory. Amen. Let's bless the Lord in this house. Come on, bless him. Hallelujah. Amen. What a joy it is to be here this morning with you and to be in fellowship with my dear, dear friend and brother, the Reverend Mr. William J. Lindsay and the ABF Fellowship. It's always a joy to be here. Amen. What are y'all doing tonight? That's my nephew on the drums right there. And so we got family in here that my family. Won't you stand, family? Amen. My brother in Christ. Amen. There you go. Amen. Now I've been given the assignment this morning to continue this series of sermons on running the race and and so I'm gonna to stick to my assignment. I remember several years ago, I invited someone uh, to our church of whom I will not name to preach our men's day and he didn't say nothing about a man. I was just hoping he'd say, would a man rob God or something? Amen, would this man that thou art mindful of him? So I, I'm gonna to stick to the script and, uh, and be a part of this series as well. This morning, I want to look at Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. Amen. For the purposes of not being tainted, I haven't watched any of the other preachers because I just want to stay in my lane and run my race. Amen. Won't you stand as we honor the Word of God, Hebrews chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. I'm reading from the NIV translation. Amen. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, amen. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I wanna tag this text, finishing strong, amen. Finishing strong, you may be seated, amen. I'm glad you stood up, so at least I said at least one time when I was preaching, you stood up, amen. Finishing strong. Life is not a 100 yards dash to the finish line. It's a marathon. You have to live it all and you have to go through it all. Every trial, every tri tribulation, every test, every temptation, every heartbreak is all a part of the refining process. 
Shakespeare said that there is theology in a tea bag. That a tea bag doesn't do anything until you drop it in hot water. Does all the flavor come out of it? And so it's not a sprint to the finish line. It's a marathon. One of the greatest inventions in the 21st century is the DVR. You can tape your favorite show and come home and watch it and fast forward through all of the commercials. Don't tell anybody this, but I like watching The Young and the Restless. Now, I don't watch that for anything other than preaching information. <clears throat> Get some good points. But when I sit down to watch The Young and the Restless about 10 p.m. in the evening after a long evening, I like to fast forward to get to all the good, juicy stuff. Well, that's not how life is. Life is not a DVR. That you can just fast forward through all the trials, the tests, and the tribulations. You have to go through it all. In fact, why would you want to do that anyway? Because that's what makes life sweeter, is it not, that you're able to go through something and overcome it and get to the other side of the race. There was a young man who <clears throat> saw an ugly caterpillar struggling to get out of the cocoon. And so he thought he would help the caterpillar out, and he took his pocket knife out and slit the cocoon. And sure enough, the caterpillar fell out, but the only problem was it never developed into a butterfly because it was in the dark dentedness of the, cac the, the cocoon that he had to develop to become the beauty of what he would become. That's how life is, is it not? That you have to go through the ugliness and the nastiness of life to get to your goal, to get to the other side. The good news is that this morning, this very day, in the archives of eternity, standing there in the balcony of heaven, the saints who have gone on before us are standing there, peeping over into our lives, looking at us from the vantage point of seeing things that we cannot see and cheering us to continue on. You know somebody that you've lost that have gone on to be with the Lord. And now they stand as witnesses on the balcony of heaven. Can you picture that? Well, the writer of Hebrews gives us a very particular picture of those who stand there cheering us on, reminding us to continue on. In fact, imploring us not to give up, to keep running. And as they ran, you can run. As they have finished their race, as Paul says, I fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. I've finished the race. Just like they finished, you can finish. It may seem dark. It may seem dim. There may be some difficult times in life, and yet they're encouraging us to run our race. Run your race. Not my race. Run your race. You, you can't run my race. You can't stand in my shoes this morning. You have to stand in your own shoes, and you have to run your race that has been set before you. And guess what? When you run it, you have to have a strategy for running. No runner gets in the middle of the race or gets to the race uh, if he's running long distance and doesn't have a strategy some of them take off fast and some of them take off slow because you have to be able to run the distance. And so if you take off too fast, you might run out of energy before you get to the finish line. But if you are a slow starter, you may need to start fast so that you can pick up the pace. But then there are a lot of us who are just like the little hamster at my friend's house. They're in the wheel and they're just running and running and running and running and going nowhere at the same time. Life got to be really exhausting, isn't it? Let me show you what I mean by that. It's not that you won't mess up while you're running, but at least when you mess up, have some new mess ups. Don't, don't be messing up on the same thing, the same tests, 
the same trial and the same temptation. I wish I had some help right in here. You know, y'all got to excuse me. I've been preaching to a camera for about 11 months. And so every time I would say, can I get a witness? I'd look at my phone and say, yeah, I got one right here. <clears throat> so y'all scanned me half to death just looking at people this morning. The show is good to look at people, isn't it? Run your race. The writer of Hebrews gives us a methodology then and how you and I can run our race, a strategy for success, if you will. Because after all, if you're running, you ain't just running to run. You're running to win. I heard Co Coach Herman Edwards one day when he got mad at the players. He said, we played to win the game. You might remember that, some of you sports enthusiasts. You're not just running aimlessly to go nowhere fast. You're running to win the race. I'll get to that at the end. But anyway, he says, number one, run your race with determination. Keep your eyes on the prize. Stay in your lane and run your race. Have I got a witness in here? And no matter how hard it gets, don't quit. Don't you give up. Run your race with determination. Derek Redman was an Olympian in the 1992 Barcelona Olympic Games and he was scheduled to run the 400 meters. Everybody knew that Derek Redman was the favorite to win. In fact, he was on all the sports covers as the one that was scheduled and, and, and set out to win the gold medal. And there they were running in this Olympic race and the gun went off Pow, and Derek Redman took off to run in the 400 meters. And in the middle of the race, he snapped his hamstring and he started to limp. And everybody that was in the race with him started passing him up. But when his father saw him struggling to get to the finish line, he jumped out of the stands, grabbed Derek Redman, and together they leaped to the finish line and Derek Redman who was scheduled to come in first place came in dead last and they asked brother Redman brother Redman why is it that you continue to run even though you know that you are going to come in last place how, how is it that you continue to run and Derek Redman said well I work too hard I've trained for four years to run this race. And I have decided that if I am going to run, that I am going to finish what I started. The graveyard is filled with people this morning. In fact, you ain't got to go to the graveyard. Some of you in here this morning. You know a whole lot of folk who love to talk a good game, but they don't ever finish anything that they start. I've determined in life that if I'm going to do something, I ain't going to do it halfway. Come here for a minute. Let me come closer to your seat. When you were in the world, you didn't do it halfway. I wish I had a help right in here. In fact, when you got ready to go to the club, you didn't just start planning Saturday night. You started planning on Monday. And you said, I'm going to schedule my hair appointment for Wednesday. I'm going to schedule my nail appointment for Thursday. I'm going to make sure I go to the mall on Friday and I'm going to get my facial done on Saturday morning so that I can be ready to drop it like it's hot and pick it up like it's cold. And you danced till the early dawn and you parted until it was like 1999. But yet when you get it here in the kingdom's work, you want to give God half service. You want to crawl in the church on Sunday morning because you're trying to run two races at the same time. And I always tell folk, I don't care if you do party, but don't make God pay for the party. When you show up at church and when you give God what belongs to him, you ought to give God his best, and you ought to be determined to win the race. You got to be determined, and you got to run your race. 
and you got to stay in your lane. Have I got a witness? Run your race with determination, but also run your race without impediments. Hebrews says, throw off every weight of sin that so easily besets us. Now, here's where folk get real uncomfortable in church is when you start talking about sin. We like to talk about a whole lot of things in church, don't we? But we don't like to talk about sin. We like to talk about how to work out. We like to talk about how to lose weight, how to grow hair without getting it weaved in, uh, how to get some money, how to get a new car, uh, how to seize your opportunity. But when you start talking about sin, nobody want to hear that. In fact, we got new names for sin. We don't call it what it is no more. In other words, it's not stealing, it's embezzlement. It's not lying, it's hyperbole. It's not, uh, it's not infidelity. It's not, it's not adultery or fooling around, it's infidelity. It ain't shacking up, it's just conveniently cohabitating. <laughs> Have I got a witness? And we try to sweeten it up. Henry Nowen says that, uh, that if Satan came to us, watch this, in his native form, then nobody would follow him. But Satan doesn't look like the man on the hot sauce bottle. Satan, Satan has a Solomon strategy and a Jezebel seduction. Uh, let me see if I can come to your seat. Satan doesn't look like Flavor Flav and Whoopi Goldberg. Flavor Flav, Satan looks like Denzel Washington and Halle Berry. <laughs> Have I got a witness? Because after all, if it didn't look good and feel good, then we wouldn't do it. I don't know about you, but every time I sinned, I had fun doing it. Oh, yeah. I wish I had some help right here. Do I have anybody here testify? Oh, yeah. You had fun doing it, but you didn't know that sin always costs you more than you're able to pay. Sin will always keep you longer than you intend to stay. Have I got a witness in here? It may start off as a one-night stand, but it can end up in 18 years of responsibility. I, I wish I had some help right in here. Sin, uh, sin, R.G. Lee says, starts off like a timid stream, but ends up in a tumultuous storm. Sin starts off like a flickering flame, but it ends up in a huge conflagration. In other words, sin is like this. I see it. I want it. I got it. And now it's got me. And so you got to be careful that when you run this race, that you got to throw off every sin, every snare that so easily entangles you. Have you ever been in an entanglement that you got in something that, you, that it was easy to get into, but it was hell to get out of? Let, let, me, let, me, see if I can, let me see if I can help you. Let me see if I can help you. You act like you don't know what I'm talking about. I got some folk in this church who ain't never sinned. And you, get, you came in here with angel wings on and halo above your head. But for the rest of us sinners in here that are saved by grace, you know just what I'm talking about. Have I got a witness in here? Let, let, let me show you what entanglement is. The Alaskan wolfhound, uh, 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 they, they are carnivorous animals. And the Eskimos in Alaska, when they would, when they would hunt down the wolf hounds, they knew that they had to catch them with blood. So what they would do is they would stab a seal and they would take the blade and they would turn it upside down upwardly where the point was upward. And then that ice would come and freeze the blade and it would look like a popsicle. And then when the Alaskan wolfhound came and saw the blood blade, 
they would come there and they would lick that blade and lick it and then when their warm tongue would hit the icy cold blade it would begin to melt the blood on the blade until they start licking and licking until they cut their tongue and they drown in their own blood that's what sin does to us we, it, it gets us to a point that we are entangled and before we know it we're in a situation we can't get out of it's when the python of passion begins to wrap itself around us and asphyxiate the very conscience out of us you can't run the race but you know when you can get happy on that i know you know you you know what i'm talking about here uh sin you got to throw away every impediment that so easily ensnares you throw away the impediments run your race with determination. Now, y'all didn't think I was going to take all day doing this, did you? But then something else, run your race with perseverance. Run your race not only with determination and throw off every weight, but run your race with perseverance. Just that, That's just a big word for patience. You, you, have to, you, you have to know that God is patient with you. But you also got to be patient with yourself. And, and you got to know that sometimes in this Christian race, you are going to fall down. And, uh, but, but, but you have to get back up and understand that it's a strategy to this. I, I opened up by saying, you got to stay in your lane. So when you're running this race, you got to understand this race is not about comparison or competition. It's about completion. Woo. Don't look at your neighbor and say, boy, I wish I was like them. Because as much as you think they all that in a bag of chips, they ain't holy as you think they are. They got their own struggles. They got their own setbacks. But you got to run your race. Have I got a witness? Look at your neighbor right next to you. Don't look at nobody else because I don't know if they got COVID or not. But look at your neighbor and just say, and just say baby, mind your own business and leave mine alone. See, 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 we too busy. Wait a minute. When a runner runs, you can't too be so busy looking at the competition that you forget that you got to run your race. You, you, you're so busy looking at somebody else. And remember this, that there are always haters on the track field that are just waiting for you to mess up. There's always people who are saying, now you see, I told you they weren't all that they said they were. See, I, 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 I'm going to level right now what is called a preemptive strike. If you think I ain't all that what I say I am, you right. So let me, just, let me just clear your conscience right quick. Because all have sinned, not y'all have sinned. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Have I got a witness? And let me tell you something else. He who thinks this morning that he cannot fall has probably already fallen. The only reason why I'm still in the race is because when I fell down, God picked me up and gave me grace to keep on going. That's what we need to have, grace. <laughs> Deliver me from a graceless Christian. They're always judging and pointing their fingers at somebody else. Have I got a witness in here? Be careful when you start doing that because then you put the target on your back because there are no, there are no folks who live in glass houses. All of us got some stuff that we still working on and thank God that he's patient with me. How many of you say, I thank you, Lord? for not giving up on me. That even when I gave up on myself, you didn't give up on me. Even when folks said I was low down, no good, no count, you said still my son and my daughter. 
Have I got a witness? But you got to be patient. And no matter how hard life gets, keep on running. Run your race with determination. Run your race with perseverance. But then, but then that's something else. He says, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Jesus is the example. And anytime you're following a man, you're going to always end up being disappointed. I always tell folk all the time, don't follow me, follow me as I follow Christ. Paul never said, follow me. Because if you follow me, you might, end, you might end up seeing me kill some Christians. <laughs> but follow me as I follow Christ. Know that I'm following someone so that you can follow me. But in a, in a nutshell, stay focused have a singularity of purpose and keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. That, that reminds me of a young man, his pastor was five feet two and behind the pulpit was a big picture of Jesus. Um, and he, he always would laugh and tease how short his pastor was, five foot two, and behind the pulpit was a picture of Jesus and one morning they had a guest visitor he was six foot five and uh, after the service was over with uh, she asked her son how did you enjoy the service he said it was a wonderful sermon but the only problem was I couldn't see Jesus <laughs> I, I wish I had some help right there don't matter what other folk are looking at don't matter what other folk do keep your eyes Fix on Jesus because, number one, the reason why we do it is because he's the author and the finisher of our faith. That, that he's the author and the finisher of our faith. It's something in there. Can I give it to you right quick? And I got one more other thing to say, and I'm going to be done. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. When I, when I grew up, some of y'all don't know nothing about this. I'm 55. I know I look 25, but I'm 55. Uh, <clears throat> at least in my own mind, I do. But when I grew up, when I grew up, we, we had, we had show enough cartoons. Uh, we had Casper and the Friendly Ghosts. Uh, we had Josie and the Pussycats. And then when you wanted to learn something, uh, they had Conjunction Junction. Somebody know what I'm talking about. What's your function? But, but, then, but then also, uh, later on that afternoon, they, they, they had a series called uh, uh, The Long Ranger. Some of y'all might remember that, The Long Ranger. Well, anyway, uh, uh, years later, my son Richard over there uh, was a little boy, and they, they were doing reruns of The Long Ranger on TNT. And uh, my, my son started watching this thing, and, and he was about 70 years old then. He was enamored by all of what happened. And you know what happened if you, you watched The Long Ranger. Uh, the Long Ranger was there, and the damsel was in distress on the train track. And uh, th 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 there she was, tied up on the train track. And they had nerve. Now, back then, they didn't have DVRs where you could fast forward to the good stuff. So they cut to a commercial break, and my son went hysterical. He said, Daddy, I, I can't believe that they're going to leave that girl tied up on the train track. You know, I had seen this before, so I started laughing. He said, Daddy, why are you laughing? This girl is on the train track. I, I, I say, son, <laughs> the reason why I'm laughing is because when I was seven, I seen the same program. And you only looking at the middle part. But the same person that wrote the girl on the train track wrote about the Long Ranger. And, and he didn't know that when the commercial break came back, that the Long Ranger and his sidekick Tonto was going to rescue the girl on the train track. 
and they was going to ride off into the sunset. And then at the end of the show, they were going to say, who was that man? Well, you don't know who he was. He's the Long Ranger. Come here for a minute. The same God that rode one Friday morning. Jesus died on the cross. Rode early Sunday morning. That he got up from the grave. Don't, for, don't, don't forget that while you're in the middle of the race, that ain't the end of the race. You're just in the middle of the race. When you look at where you are going through, you're just looking at the right now. God looks at the not yet. God looks at the expanse of eternity. And the saints in heaven said, keep on running because you're trying to get to the prize of a higher calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Now, if you're going to run the race with perseverance, with determination, if you're going to keep your eyes on the prize, if you're going to stay away from impediments, it's all for one reason, that you might get to your reward. Now, you're you, you, you missing the best part if you're missing that. I mean, why do all this running if when you get to the end, you ain't going to get no reward? The only reason why you're running in the first place is so that you can get your reward. Have I got a witness? I, I, I'm done now. I hope I didn't keep you too long. If you see me out there, how that a preacher when you see him in the streets. But one last thing, and I'm done. You got to get, look at your day and say, you don't want no reward. Oh, I want mine. All this hell I've been through in life, I can't wait to get to heaven. Now, Lord, I, that don't mean I want to go right now. I want you to, I want to clarify that, but when I do get there, I ain't ready to go just quite yet. I got to get back to Paris at least one more time. But while I'm here, I know I'm going to get my reward. Have I got a witness? I, I'm done now for real. But I, but I remember several years ago before COVID, I, I took my wife to Hawaii. I took her to Hawaii and, uh, the problem was, I don't know if you've ever been now. I, I had planned for the trip, but by the time the trip got here, my money was a little short. We had booked a flight in the hotel, uh, but I was balling on a budget. I'm going to tell you something, you don't want to go nowhere on a budget. <laughs> but don't act like I'm the only one. You've been there too. You've been there too. You've been there. You've been, you've been in L.A. going to in and out Burger three days a week. We, we were out there in Hawaii, and, and I, I tried to prep my wife before we got there. I said, now, baby, I said, now, listen, uh, I, I wish I could do a whole lot, but I ain't got a whole lot. So I'm just letting you know up front now. I'm being real with you. We've been together too long for me to have to front, so I'm going to just let you know right now that it, it can't be no extras. It can't be no extras. No, we ain't doing all that other stuff. We, it can't be no extras. So the lady came down the aisle and said, give me an extra few crackers. <clears throat> Got to the hotel. We have the Marriott Hotel. We, I had booked that. It was a beautiful hotel. They said, sir, you got a suite. And we were standing there at the front desk, and the lady said, well, we got paraglide. And I said, black folk don't do that anyway. <laughs> then we got the dinner cruise, and we got massages, and we got four pools and two saunas. And I started hunching my wife, hey, hey, it can't be no, can't be no extras. No, 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 can't be no extras. We ain't got that kind of money. I said, now, I said, we're going to do everything that's free. We're going we're gonna to put our white shorts on and we're going to walk down the beach and hold hands. That's free. We're we going to drive by Pearl Harbor. We ain't going to get no tickets to look in. We're just going to stand over there <laughs> and look at it because <laughs> that's free. And then she said, we got free breakfast in the morning. We'll get up early. Mm. 
And eat as much as you can. Because <laughs> that's free. Don't, don't, don't judge me now. Don't judge me now. I'm trying, I'm trying to ball on a budget. I say, but, but, but then, but then my wife, my wife, you know, she's cunning and crafty. And, uh, you know, you know, when the women get to give you that eye, she said, she said, now they did say they had massages. And she said, boy, my, my shoulder show is hurting from this long 10 hour flight. I said, now baby, I said, there wasn't going to be no extras. I said, we can't. Can't do that. I opened up the minute bar and they had all these goodies in there. And I looked at everything. I said, hey, look at that. And my wife said, hey, baby, you said it wasn't going to be no extras. <laughs> I said, yeah, you're right. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Let me just go and get my VA juice and get it over with. And then she said, but, but, my, but my shoulder is still hurting. She said, I said, well, look, why don't you just call down there and ask them what they charged just to massage the shoulder part. <laughs> No, I, I didn't do that. I'm, I'm making that part up. But I said, just call down there anyway. Call down there. They start talking to her. They said, give, give the phone to your husband. And they said, you, you Mr. Singleton? Yes. Is your email address XYZ? Yes. Uh, is your rewards number XYZ? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You, you got a rewards number? Yes. Uh, you, you may not know this, Mr. Singleton, because you are a preferred Marriott rewards holder. That everything in the hotel when you checked in is included in the price. I said, look at God. <laughs> I put that phone down. I said, girl, go on down now. Get your massage from the rooter to the tutor. Swim in every pool. When you get through, work on the jacuzzi and stay down now as long as you want because I'm going to be working on this mini bar because membership has its privileges. And when you get to heaven, God say, all oh, the hell you've been through down here, if you keep running, I got a reward that's set up just for you. Anybody you want it? Anybody you want it? Keep running. Set aside every weight. Get rid of impediments. Be determined to run this race. Hallelujah for the Lamb. Hallelujah for the Lamb. Hallelujah for the Lamb. Hallelujah. I got a cloud of witnesses. This morning, up in the archives of eternity, cheering you and I on, saying, keep running. You're going to have some impediments. Set aside every weight. Don't give up. Be determined. Run your race. Stay in your lane. Don't get caught up in the game of comparison and competition. Why would you want to be anybody else when you can just be you? <laughs> Thank you, Father, for loving us. Hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. When all odds are against us, you remind us that you love us, that you believe in us. All we just need to do is believe in the God that believes in us and keep running to get to a prize of a higher calling which is in Christ Jesus. So we thank you now word go forth with power and conviction someone who has got out of the race and got discouraged help them to get back in it Lord and keep going keep moving amen praise the name of the Lord praise his name
if there is one today who would like to make the decision to give their lives to Christ, now is your opportunity. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, that you are indeed saved. So if you have the desire in your heart, the tugging of your heart to to lay your life down for him today, if you'll repeat after me this prayer, Lord, I am a sinner. And I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Today, I confess that Jesus died for me, that Jesus is my savior. And I believe in my heart that those things were done just for me. So I confess today that I give my life to you. I confess today that I will live for you and give you my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer today, you are indeed saved. And I say congratulations to you. Amen. It's time for our announcements for this week. This week's announcements. Each and every day we have prayer. 6.30, 12.30, 6 p.m. Join us each day on the prayer call. It's the same number, same code all throughout the day. So please, I encourage you all to come in at some point of the day and pray with us. We are praying for you each and every day. We would love for you all to come and join us as well. To give, it is indeed, we always want to, you know, sow into the kingdom. We always want to give. <clears throat> So there's many different ways for us to give. You can give on the app. You can go to our website, above.org. You can mail it in on your way out. You can drop your envelope in the bucket on your way out. But be sure to be a blessing to the kingdom of God and continue to sow into the kingdom. It is groups. Some groups are off for summer, but some groups are still meeting. If you want more information about our small groups, just visit our website, above.org, and it will give you everything that you need. Amen. The Above Men's Gathering is coming up this Saturday. This Saturday, Above Men's Gathering. Uh, so all of our men of ABF, come and join us. I believe it's at 9 a.m. Uh, with past Saturday morning. Amen. And that concludes our announcements for the week. So if we could all stand together as we dismiss. There are still blessing bags in the foyer as well. The outreach ministry have um, created these wonderful blessing bags. If you want to be a blessing to someone else, please go ahead and grab a blessing bag on your way out. Lord, thank you for a beautiful word today. Thank you, oh Father, for just a great day of worship. So as we go today, let us go in peace. Let us go in love. Let us go in joy until we meet each other again. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a beautiful week, y'all.